Hey everyone, Shane here with eTerror.com. Today I have a 2017 Chevrolet Silverado 2500, and I want to walk through how to install the torque lift stable load suspension enhancement with quick disconnect for your overload spring. You've obviously towed a vehicle or towed trailers in the past, and you have felt some of the effects that a vehicle has that doesn't have suspension enhancement. Uh, for instance, body roll, sway, and porpoising. Porpoising is when the vehicle bounces and it takes a little bit for it to settle. Sway is maybe you hit a pothole on one side of the vehicle and the back of the vehicle feels like it's moving. Body roll. Uh, it's when your vehicle seems like it's leaning when you turn in a corner. Well, how that happens or how that occurs is the gap between your upper spring pack and your lower overload spring. What happens is when you add weight, your upper spring pack flattens out. Your overload spring kicks in to support your upper spring pack. Well, it's only going to support it so much because you're basically supporting four springs with one extra spring. Adding the stable load allows us to fill the gap between our overload spring and our top spring pack so that our overload spring engages instantly when we add weight. With the stable load, able to fill the gap between our overload spring and our upper spring pack, this is where you're going to greatly reduce your body roll, your sway, and your porpoising. Now let's compare these to other types of enhancement. For instance, airbags. Airbags are what a lot of individuals are putting on their vehicles to make their ride quality much better when they're towing a camper or a trailer. Although airbags provide a significant amount of stability when hauling those heavier loads, there are limitations with them. One, they're going to be more involved with installation. Two, you have to monitor air pressure all the time. Uh, three, you're going to have more components with airbags that could potentially fail. Also, this is a 2500. If we put airbags on here that have a combined weight capacity of 5,000 pounds, but the truck can handle more than that, we're limited to what the bags can handle. We're now not able to carry what our vehicle can handle because we're going by what we have to go by what the bags can do. With the stable load, we don't have a limitation other than what the vehicle can handle. With these installed, this is not going to affect our ride quality whatsoever when they're disengaged because we still maintain our factory gap here. When we're adding a load, we simply pull the pin out. We can take a side wrench with an extension and we'll engage those right into place like that. And what that does, again, is it's filling the gap. So now our overload spring engages right away rather than waiting for our upper springs to flatten out. Reinsert your pin. And we'll repeat the process for the three remaining and you're ready to go. With these being a stainless steel construction, we're not going to have to worry about rust or corrosion. These are also going to be available in black and you can find those here at eTrailer. Before we get to the installation, what we're going to do is we've got some weight in the back. Uh, we've got about 190 gallons, which averages out to about 1,590 pounds. Um, we're going to take it through the test course before we actually install the stable loads so that we can give you a good idea of what your factory spring pack is doing, uh, how much movement it's, uh, how much movement you're getting out of your factory spring pack before your overload spring activates. Um, so I like to use water because water shifts, and when it shifts, you get a lot of body roll and a lot of movement out of the vehicle, which is what we want to do, because we want to put the products to the test as much as possible. Obviously, you can see today we have a lot of snow, ice. This is not water, it's a big block of ice. So we're gonna do the best we can to make sure that we uh, get you the information needed so you can make a good decision. Here in our test course, you will notice, as we go over speed bumps with the factory suspension setup under weight, we get a lot of up and down movement, which in turn puts a significant amount of strain on the suspension. Here on our slalom course, with our factory setup, you will see a lot of body roll when loaded. Now 
Now that we have our stable loads installed, let's go ahead and take it back out on the test course and see how it does. Now with the same weight, our stable loads engaged, this section simulates uneven terrain. You will notice we are not going to have as much up and down movement because the factory overload spring is basically pre-engaged and takes up the gap between it and the factory spring roll. Here in our slalom course, you will see we have minimized our body roll. Having the overload spring again pre-engaged allows the vehicle to stay upright and makes the ride when hauling a load much more enjoyable. These are going to come in a set of four and they're pretty much universal. This plate or can be installed inside or outside. Uh, how we have it here is outside. We can turn this around and we can install it to where it's on the inside depending on the limited space you may have. Now, installing it's very simple. You're gonna have one bolt that has to go through your spring, and then of course you're gonna have to put your plates together. But it is pretty straightforward. I will recommend getting a jack stand, and you wanna jack the vehicle up from the frame itself to allow this gap to open up a little bit because this bolt does have to feed down in there. Now that we've gone over some of the features, let's walk through how to get them installed. So here, what we're gonna do is if you have a hole you're going to have a pad in here like this. We're going to take it and we're going to push it out. If you don't have a hole, what you're going to do is you're going to measure an inch in from the end, 7 16 drill bit, you're going to center it and drill a hole there. Next, what you're going to do is from the end, you're going to measure in three inches. And you can see where I have the mark there. We need to measure the thickness of the spring and the gap between our overload spring and our top springs. That's going to determine how many plates we're going to be installing onto our bracket. This is what is going to come in your kit. You have your lower plate. Now it doesn't matter which side of the spring you put it on. Uh, it's really going to depend on your clearance. We're actually going to install it on the outside. It's going to come with this rubber ring. Uh, if it's not inserted in the hole, you want to just take it and push it down inside of that hole. You're going to have three plates that look like this. The measurement that we took for uh, the gap between the lower overload spring and your top spring pack is going to determine how many plates you use. If it's three quarters of an inch or bigger or more, we're going to use all three plates. If it's a half inch to three quarters, we're going to use two plates. And if it's a quarter inch to half inch, we're going to use one plate. For the back, we're going to be using all three plates. So we'll take our three plates, depending on the gap. This is going to be our lower plate, our second plate, we're going to make sure that these two holes in our lower plate are sticking out of the end. Let's take our third one, go over like that. We're going to take the smaller bolt, we're going to come up from the bottom, and we'll add on our flange nut. Essentially what we want is we want them to look like this. We're going to take the larger bolt, we're going to go th down through this hole. Depending on the gap between your lower overload spring and your upper spring pack will determine how many washers you're going to put on. We are over a three quarters of an inch, so we're going to add all four. On the lower bracket, this outside hole here. I'm going to take this and we're going to go straight down. We'll flip it over. And we're going to add on the nylon lock nut. Next, we're going to go ahead and install our pin through this hole to keep it lined up. Now we can come back and we can tighten this down. When we tighten this down, we don't want to tighten it so much that we can't turn these. Just enough that we're able to spin these when we need to. We're going to use a 19 millimeter socket and 19 millimeter wrench.
can see we have no play, but we're still able to move it. Next, we're going to take our low profile hex bolt. We're going to go down through the hole in the spring. We're going to take our plate and slide it up over like this. And we're going to install the nylon lock on it. Next, you're going to notice some small holes here. Depending on the width of the spring, is going to determine what hole you're going to use. We're actually pretty wide, so we're going to be using this outside hole. You're going to get a small bolt. We're going to go up like that. And on the top side, we'll put a nut. And what this does is basically a safety pin to keep this from spinning when it's engaged. We're going to use an 11 millimeter socket and wrench. And we'll go ahead and tighten down our hardware here. Now we're going to take a 5.8 socket and wrench and we're going to tighten down the center bolt. Once you get one done, you're going to repeat that process for the one in front of the axle and then for the opposite side of the vehicle. Other than that, you're ready to go. That's going to do it for a look at the installation on the torque lift stable load suspension enhancement with quick disconnect for your lower overload springs on a 2017 Chevrolet Silverado 2500.